Praise the Lord, saints. I'm your sister Kelly, and you are the remnant rising. The Lord is coming. There's no doubt about that, and we're supposed to be expectant. If we're really expectant, then we are going to be pretty cautious, not fearful, not worried, but pretty cautious about how we're living, about what we're taking in on a daily basis, because we want to be prepared at the banquet feast of the Lord. We don't want to be a foolish virgin who's unprepared. Preparation cannot come on the day of. Preparation comes as a process. So the world is really being flipped inside out as the powers that be of spiritual wickedness, Ephesians 6, you know, on the earth and in the spiritual, they're making way for the coming of the fake Jesus. That is to say the Antichrist. And they're making this brand new counterfeit Christianity. They're really, um, well, our prophet Isaiah said it best in chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They're really flipping the script on everything. And this too has been a process over several years. I mean, let's be honest. It wasn't like this in the 90s. Nevertheless, we have everything from, you know, all these agendas and new communities and laws being made to really... <laughs> There's like kids outside. I don't know what toy that was. And laws being made to really protect godlessness. And it's it's all obviously completely, you know, it's it's demonic. And in the end is written, but that doesn't mean we should look away from evil. You know, we are here to overcome evil with good. So here, whenever the scriptures say woe to, that speaks to judgment. Woe is a judgment, which we see in Revelation, you know, Woe is 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 God finally saying the clock has run out and judgment is here. So the false light is biblical, but it's also like a saying. You've heard people say like, oh, um, to see something like in a false light means not to see it as it really is. And that's Satan's plan. You know, he says, uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So if you can make what's evil look good, then why are people going to earnestly seek what is truly good, which is Christ alone? You know, you won't. And that is the scheme of Satan. When it comes to the church in Corinth, Paul was dealing with really spiritually gifted people, but he had to teach them how to use those spiritual gifts wisely because they were using these gifts in a really self-serving, totally free-for-all way. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So how do we discern a minister of righteousness? Well, it's those who are leading you into the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. There is no way around that. You know, we're talking about Holy Spirit filled, called, anointed and appointed and chosen people who fell astray, turned aside to pride, turned aside to vanity, to feeding their own bellies instead of feeding the sheep. We see this all the time in mega churches. We saw many of these pastors in mega churches, um, you know, this year exposed alone, but this is not a problem. Limited to mega churches, do not be deceived. You might ask, well, Kelly, why do you care? And I'm not sure that, you know, Kelly actually does, but it's no longer I uh, who live, but Christ through me. You know, what I'm saying is like, of course, I care about you, but this is a Holy Spirit led thing. And I, it took me a long time to get to this point of bravery and courage and boldness because frankly, it's not an easy topic to do, you know, but like Paul says in the scriptures, he's telling, talking to the people and he's like, I feel this godly jealousy for you. And that's what I feel in Holy Spirit is a very much like, why are you feeding God's people crap? 
Why are you leading them astray? Why are you making them, you know, look everywhere but unto the Lord, leading them, telling them everything that they're turning them into self-righteous people instead of talking to them about the true gospel. That's what a Pharisee is. They hide the mysteries of the gospel. They'll tell you everything but the mysteries of the gospel. If God told these folks, I'm coming tomorrow. Write me your best sermon for the people. I want to review it. Do you think that it would be Mick prophecy crap? No, it would be like the meat. It would be what they should be giving you every single time they post, pretending that God's eyes are ever on them. If we have platforms and opportunity to lead God's people, then we need to lead God's people into righteousness, into patterns of holiness. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. We see this on the grandest scale of politics. Speaking of America, where we have, um, you know, Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. And, you know, Trump is clearly the lesser of two evils. He really is, you know, the hope that we have for America to be put on solid ground. However, this woman, Kamala Harris, is in such a false light by the powers that be in this world, by demonic forces that even despite all evidence to the contrary, people will vote for her. Even Christians are voting for her when she clearly has an anti-Christ agenda to lead people like Jezebel did unto their flesh. We can't pick favorites here. Don't, you know, God doesn't pick favorites and the scriptures tell us not to pick favorites. Don't make allegiance with yourself to people that you think are good people and there are no good people over the truth because that's what the counterfeit Christianity is all about. It's about unity at the expense of truth. This world is making way for the Antichrist. And honestly, the powers that be in this world, the demonic powers, they're not concerned with Kamala or Trump. They're not concerned with America. They're just simply making way for the Antichrist period. Likewise, we should only be concerned with the truth and we not we should not be so concerned with the vessel. You know, you would never see people like the true prophets of the Bible weren't the most popular people. To the contrary, they were often mocked and their lives were threatened and they were, you know, constantly abused and persecuted because the majority of people in this world and in fact, everyone like anyone, any human our flesh does not love the truth and that's never going to change because we don't have our perfected glorified bodies yet. You know, we don't love the truth. So we have to be aware of our predication towards loving an ego stroke, towards loving, you know, um, something that's like 75% true and otherwise, you know, agreements aren't made by your declarations. Agreements are made in the heart. So when you expose yourself to what is false, you have to know that you're tempting yourself. Your own humanity in its heart is liking what's false. So you have to flee from that. Come out of her continues to say, Holy Spirit. We have entire communities of people that are so deceived that their delusion is so incredibly fragile that the dark powers that be in this world are making laws to protect their delusion. They're changing and cutting up their very bodies. These people were made in the image of God, but they are cutting up their entire bodies because they have healing. They have all this stuff and trauma and in them and just hormones and all sorts of things that they're being told that all this trauma it will be fixed if you just, you know, deal with what's on the outside and they are so deluded and they're in so much of a lie and they're being led to hell and they're, they're really leading themselves into doing things to themselves that can never be taken back, you know, because they love the lie, because Satan has kept from them the gospel of truth. You know, how many saints today are really miserable and just sad and bitter because they won't expose themselves. They won't fully submit themselves to the Lord. We have entire rapture communities. If you look in those comments, those are some of the most miserable Christians you've ever seen. Like I'm talking, they're angry. They're they're frustrated with God. They're, they're you know, they, they don't submit to the Lord. They're not faithful to him, but they're waiting for God to pluck them out of here. You know, there's so much deception in this world that we cannot expose 
expose ourselves even to a little bit of it, we need to remember that we are only, like we're not faithful to God of our own accord. We're faithful to God by desperately throwing ourselves on his altar every single day. And when you have eyes to see, you're going to clearly see when you're being fed a lie, when you're being fed crap, when something is enveloped in the false light of Satan himself. And then the truth will become greater than how nice you think people are or how anointed you think people are or how you want, you know, the first black woman president. The truth will become greater than all things. The truth must be greater. We cannot uh, conform to this world, which is going to bring this uh, unity at the expense of truth. Do not conform today and you won't conform tomorrow. Do not love a lie today. Even don't let your heart be divided even 2% and you will not love a lie tomorrow. Tomorrow. Seek the Lord today and, and Holy Spirit will bring you into all understanding. Many people have testified, you know, I once believed in this and this and this, but now the Holy Spirit brought me into the understanding of the truth. The Holy Spirit is our helper and our comforter. We do not need to settle for the false voices of this world to settle for what we think is good enough. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you into all truths and do not settle for worldly less.